Nearly a year ago, back in December 2012, the EU Article 13.1 General Health Claims were legalised. There are now 224 Article 13.1 claims that can be used on fortified and functional food and drink products in the EU. These are considered to be the most stringent globally, with the claims having a success rate of only 10%. However, these claims have opened up the opportunity for innovation through the likes of vitamins and minerals, which offer more cheaper innovation, but also through the use of more specialised added value ingredients, which can offer specific health benefits. These ingredients, particularly the latter ones, offer price justification for both the manufacturer as well as the consumer. As Diana mentioned, the health claims relating to vitamins and minerals, such as supporting the immune system and the development of collagen, offer manufacturers a good opportunity to tap into the health and wellness claims, as consumers look to get more functionality out of their food and beverage products. In 2012, 55,000 tonnes of vitamins and minerals were consumed in beverages. That's around half of all vitamins and minerals in, consumed in Europe. And functional bottled water, in particular, um, offers vitamins and minerals a good um, opportunity for growth. Um, the category grew by more than 50% over 2007 to 2012, and it's expected to continue to grow um, with a compound annual growth rate of 7% from 2012 to 2017. In terms of more specialised added value ingredients, one of the most controversial areas of the Article 13.1 General Health Claims was the fact that probiotics did not gain a single claim. As a result, probiotic yoghurts, um, both spoonable as well as drinking yoghurt, combined saw a decline in growth of 2% over 2011 to 2012, compared to a positive growth of 6% globally over the same time period. However, there are opportunities within digestive health outside of probiotics, particularly in the area of fibres. For example, wheat bran, barley and rye fibre all gained a claim for digestive health as part of the Article 13.1 health claims. Interestingly, wheat bran fibre gained the same claim for digestive health that Activia used to be able to carry on their probiotic yoghurts in Europe. Yoghurt has long been associated with digestive health and probiotics in particular, but more recently manufacturers have been looked to tap into a new trend, and that is protein. Um, a lot of manufacturers now offer um, Greek-style yoghurts, um, which are low in fat and high in protein, and these are popular with um, mainstream consumers who um, are looking to maintain or lose weight. And protein's really moved away from being um, the province of the fitness craze and has become a lot more mainstream. So uh, this offers manufacturers um, a good opportunity, um, particularly for um, whey protein ingredients and um, milk protein. Um, and these offer um, manufacturers an alternative to the tr traditional straining process that's used to produce Greek yogurt. Um, protein also received three Article 13.1 health claims um, relating to bone and muscle health. 